Welcome again to the League of Women Voters program called Connect the Dots. The Missouri State Legislative Session is going to begin their 2023 session early in January. So today we interview a Boone County legislator about their priorities and plans for the upcoming session. We have as our guest Cherie Tolson Rice, who represents the 44th District, and this is her fourth and final term. Welcome. How are you? Thank you, David. Glad to be here. Let me ask you, how long ago does 2016 seem? It flies. It went <laughs> fast. Yeah. Tell me about uh, what you, what your thoughts are entering this final legislative session as a state rep. Well, I'm happy that I'm in the super majority of Republicans and um, looking forward to getting a lot of things accomplished this year. Uh, it's been a kind of a strange last few years in Jeff City. We had to deal with COVID in 2020. Uh, in 2022, we had to work on the congressional maps, which took a very lot of work and time and was contentious. And so we hope to have smooth sailing in 2023. I asked this of Senator Rowden a few moments ago before we record your session, and that is, what do you wish you knew back when you started that you know now? Mm. Politics is dirty. Um, I tell you, it's hard work, and um, you you learn a lot as you go, but it's very rewarding, and um, uh, I think the best part of my job is uh, helping constituents. Tell, tell me about that. Tell me how, uh, especially for those who are listening, I think the League of Women Voters have very plugged in members. So they are pretty aware of, of how to contact and how to stay up with what happens in Jefferson City. But there are a lot of people that don't. What is uh, your advice for those who say, I, I want somebody to listen to me. I want somebody to hear what is a concern of mine. Sure. So there's so many different ways. Um, you know, you don't have to drive to Jeff City to talk to your legislator. You can call them. You can email them. I mean, throughout the district constantly, they can see me face to face, you know, they can show up at my house if they need to. But, um, you know, I think we're all very available and uh, we like hearing from constituents. Tell me about how the district has changed. 2016 doesn't seem that long ago, but it kind of is when you and, mm -hmm. and you outlined a while ago a lot of things that have happened in the six years, almost seven years now. So how has your district changed? So uh, for my first three terms, I was in what they call a 50-50 district. I was basically half Columbia, which votes Democratic, and half rural, which votes conservative. And uh, so with the redistricting, when I went into this in 2016, I didn't know if I would even get a fourth and final term, depending on how the redistricting went. So I've lost uh, uh, part of Randolph County in the city of Sturgeon, but now I'm completely rural, have no city of Columbia, and um, although I still have parts of Columbia School District, but uh, my new district will include Centralia Hallsville and all of Southern Boone, uh, south of 163, not just Ashland, but Pierpont, Guthrie, McBain, um, mm -hmm. Hartsburg. It's, it's, it's an interesting district, especially mm -hmm. when you say, and we've talked to the other state representatives, you have more experience than all of them combined. Mm -hmm but you're representing a really different part of the Boone County than what they represent. Absolutely. So, you know, Boone County is is very unique in that we're half rural, half urban, half uh, Democrat, half Republican, and we're a very purple county. So um, I think this district gets more back to my roots. I come from the small town of Hallsville, former mayor there, was the city clerk court administrator for 30 years. Um, I, I do pro bono work for Hartsburg for about the last decade, and I advise a lot of the cities uh, on different things. So I love having experience under my belt. I've been working in government 40 years, and I think I'm just a huge asset with my knowledge. What uh, did you learn being mayor that has helped you as a state rep? Well, just, uh, you know, the, the, the workings of government. I mean, you know, we are a constitutional representative republic. I always hear the word democracy. We are not a democracy. And, um, you know, people forget that a democracy is two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for dinner. Mm -hmm. And so you elect your officials to be your voice, to represent you. And that's what we have in Missouri. So um, going into the legislative session that begins pretty shortly, what are, you, what are your priorities? What are you going to be working on now with the experience heading into your fourth and final term as a state rep? What's, uh, what's high on your priority list? Well, we have many things. I think one of the, the big topics is initiative petition reform, no matter how that may pan out or look like. Um, 
I have sat on the House Education or uh, Elections Committee for the last six years. I'm a former election authority. I've been seeing dead people on Boone County voter rolls for 40 years, and I'm passionate about elections. You know, nobody's being disenfranchised with the new photo ID law. Um, you know, nobody is turned away, and. Um, you know, you have to have an ID for everything. Why not to vote? So anyway, children, I sit on the education committee. So I think, you know, uh, there's so much wokeness and far left liberal indoctrination of our children in Boone County and Missouri. And uh, my concern is about these children with, um, you know, transgender dysphoria. It is a mental disorder when you're getting healthy body parts cut off and hormone therapies, you know, once you're 18, you can do with your body what you want, but, um, you know, keeping girls out of boys, uh, boys out of girls sports, etc. you know, um, we need to get back to common sense and basics and uh, quit, quit all these uh, woke ideologies going on. I think uh, some people who hear that would say those are issues that resonate with a certain proportion of the population. Definitely those are of concern for them. But how big of a problem is it? For example, let's go back to the voter rolls. Help me understand, I don't think we've had a lot of dead people, the people trying to vote in the name of the dead person, but why is it important to cull those off of a off Yeah, of a and, and I'm roll? not saying that the dead people in Boone County are voting. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's no need for uh, my couple of my records is someone has been dead 26 years or somebody that's 117 years old at an address that no longer existed when they were 107. It's that it costs money and it opens the door for pot potential fraud. There has been voter fraud in Boone County, there has been voter fraud in Missouri, and there has been voter fraud nationwide. But, um, uh, you know, the counties, they overinflate their roles for numerous reasons. They get more money from the state of Missouri based on the number of registered voters. They build the cities. When I was clerk in Hallsville, I was billed for having more registered voters when we came off the 1980 census than we had for every man, woman, child under age 18, and dog and cat. And why were we having to pay that bill when it was not a true and accurate voter roll? I think you understand it much better than most of us do, but I, I don't understand how it cost. In other words, what- Printing, postage. Um, oh, I see, because- So the, so the, the clerk says you're you have- required to give certain information to registered voters. Yeah. And if you don't know whether they're alive or dead, you're spending money to contact them with certain- Sure. Things. So um, a few years ago, um, before our county clerk, we found out by pure accident, here in Boone County, we have MU, Columbia College, and Stevens College. And do you know how many- uh, students come here, register to vote, and never unregister when they move away. What well, we found out, the envelopes were saying do not forward, but it did not say return to sender. MU, Columbia College, and Stevens College, when they were getting students' um, cards and sample ballots in the mail, they were throwing them in the trash. The clerk never knew they weren't living there anymore. They never knew that they um, had moved, and and uh, we have a federal uh, election law. You're supposed to call the rolls every four years, every um, two federal election cycles, and it's not being done. On election day, November 8th, I found and contacted Brianna Lennon, a lady died in Boone County in 2003. But the only comment I got was, but she hasn't voted since 2002. <laughs> really? Why is her name not almost 20 years later still on the rolls? It's unacceptable. It's not just Boone County. It's uh, statewide. And uh, I passed a law last year, uh, the state... Uh, can audit voter rolls, and if they don't clean them up, the state can withhold money for their elections. Are you going to automatically be on the same committees as you Not have been? automatically. So every two years, the speaker has the prerogative uh, to put you on whatever committees. We get to send in a list of ones we would like to be on. Um, I, you know, so hope I might be back on education, elections, and um, hopefully judiciary, but really it's wherever the speaker puts you or feels you're more, most needed or your background or knowledge would help. When the fourth term as a state rep runs its course, how are mm -hmm. you deciding now what will come next for you? 
So, um, you know, I am not at this time planning to run for any other elected office. I, I run a very busy law firm. I have two full-time jobs currently. And at my age, I may want to slow down and enjoy my grandchildren more. I also own a property management company going on 28 years now. So, um, you know, I'm not going to find a lack of things to do, and mm -hmm. I will stay involved and keep busy. So what will you say will make this a successful session? If we can get some of the uh, conservative priorities passed. And what would stand in the way of that happening, especially with such an advantage, I think it's 111 to 52? Uh, you know, uh, we really have three parties down in Jeff City. We have Democrats, uh, we have moderate, some call rhino Republicans, and then we have party platform conservative Republicans. So, you know, it, it's just, can we all come together and come into an agreement on things? Well, uh, any other feelings that you have as you're on the uh, threshold of the new session? I'm looking forward to it. Now, uh, losing uh, Chuck Basie and Sarah Walsh, I'll be carrying the shoulder of three people. I have in the past six years had Democrat districts constituents have to call me. They don't call them back. They don't email them back. So now I have to do the work of basically five people uh, this year. So, um, you know, if somebody knows if you want a bill passed, you want something done in Jeff City, you have to go to a Republican. 44th State Representative Cherie Tolson Reich, best of luck in this session. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, David. The uh, League of Women Voters thanks Ready for allowing us to use their uh, space for today's interview. And thanks to the League of Women Voters, there are three who are the producers of this show Diane Schuler, Sharon Schneeberger, and Carol Schreiber. The series of state legislator interviews is on YouTube and also posted on the League's website, which is lwvcbc.org. Thank you.